Hi everybody, welcome to another Car Stories here on PCTV. My name is Mike Inessa. I'm the host of the show. It's sponsored by my company, Wheels in Motion. You can check us out on the web at www.wheels-in-motion.biz. You go on there, you'll see some of the projects we have done and some of the projects we are doing. Not just classic cars, we do new cars, we do collision work, and we're right here in Pottstown. We have two locations at 26 East A Street is our mechanical shop, and at 346 Jefferson Avenue is our body shop and our detail shop. So the show is sponsored by my company. If you would like to help sponsor this show to uh, the area of Pottstown, Car Stories, you can get in touch with me or get in touch with PCTV. Uh, our show has been going on here, I guess now, for about six or seven months. Last month's show was really good. I heard a lot of people in the area. In fact, today someone came up to me. If you didn't see last month's show, it is archived. You can go to the PCTV uh, network and you can see past shows, um, which last month's show was the Little Brothers Car Club and a little information about some of the local car clubs and everybody I bump into says it was really good. And it was, it was interesting, it was about local history. And it's funny, when we did that show last month, it was Larry Lilly, Lenny Cox, and Larry Shaner. I've never, I knew Larry Lilly a little bit from the business over the years, but I've never met the other two gentlemen. And we just, you know, before the show, after the show, and during the show, we talked about the local history of Pottstown and cars. And they had told me about they wanted a copy of the show to send to a friend of theirs in Florida. So, um, of course, we, we had done that. And at my shop, we had we gotten an email from a guy in Florida uh, that he wanted a copy of the show, which is, this is great. The phone rang. I picked up the phone, and it was an old friend of mine, John Connick. And he's a local guy, car guy, just like me. Uh, from probably five years old, riding his bicycle all his life. He's drag raced, he's dirt raced, uh, built cars, worked at S&W race uh, chassis shop. I mean, just a good guy, a true car guy, and he moved to Florida about 10 years ago. And I had said to him, oh, you're the guy from Florida. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, well, the guys on the show said, um, there's a guy in Florida that wants a copy. He goes, no, I'm, I'm not the guy that, you know, I, I did see your show. He goes, I enjoyed it. He said, but I'm not the guy. And the guy was Norman Bowman. He's, he emailed me. And I told John that. And John says, oh, my, I haven't talked to Norman Bowman for 30 years. So I forwarded his email information to John. They got in contact with each other. And a few days later, John calls me up again. He goes, hey, I want to bug you. I said, no, no, this is really cool that our show in Pottstown and our story about the Little Brothers Car Club went all the way to Florida. And John proceeds to tell me he talked to Norman Bowman. He, he knew him from years ago. That Vance Bowers, the founder of the club, is there in Florida. He saw the show. And uh, I, a couple other people, there were about five people in Florida from Pottstown all of, of that age group are watching PCTV on the internet and uh, enjoying the show about when they were kids running around the streets of Pottstown, Pottstown racing and doing the car thing. So that's what this show is all about, folks. It's about stories of Pottstown and the surrounding area, board town or whatever, and the car stories. Everyone has a car story, uh, whether it be a car club whether it be a car they own since they were a kid. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. So if you know anyone with a car story, please contact PCTV or contact me, Mike Yanessa, at Wheels in Motion. Uh, my numbers are in the book, and our website is listed behind me, and it will be posted up on the screen throughout the show. So uh, get in contact with us. What we're doing right, what I'm doing right now is trying to put together a show on local racing history. We have a lot of local racing history in Pottstown. So I'd like to put a show together with, back in the day there were only was a handful of drag racers or dirt racers um, in the Pottstown area. So if you are one of them and you're watching the show or if you know someone, uh, you know, uh, please get in contact with me. I'd like to maybe in March 
do a show on local drag racers, uh, local, you know, um, car guys that I remember. When I was a kid, I, I can remember, like I said, Tony Zimba, uh, who I've talked about before in the show. He was on High Street when I did the live show. Uh, I was probably five years old, and I remember seeing his candy apple red willies on a rollback on Charlotte Street, loaded up Sunday morning on the way to church. He probably raced Saturday night, left the car there. So there's, there's a lot of stories like that. Marvin Yerger is another one. Steve Panko. I'm asking you guys, if you hear the show or if you know these people, tell them. I want old pictures of drag racing, old pictures of the hot rods. Back in the day when racing was, was uh, you know, uh, limited to a few local talented people. So that's, uh, tonight's show is no guest. It's just me. Uh, the, la the last show was the Little Brothers. The show be before that was Bill Clemens. We had a great feedback on that show also. He came in and shared his story about his 67 Z28 Camaro. So uh, I'm going to try to keep it fresh, try to liven it up. Each month do something a little different. This month, it's just me. So I'm going to talk to you about one of my car stories. It seems like all of my cars have stories. But the one I'm going to talk about tonight is my first frame-up restoration. Um, I, I, like I said before, I'm a local guy. I grew up here in Pottstown on Warren Street. Um, since I was at earliest memory, I was five years old, and I was waxing my dad's 57 DeSoto with a can of kit wax. And my brother had a 56 Chevy in the driveway, and uh, we used to go to raise used auto parts to look for Lancer hubcaps to put on his 56 Chevy. Again, I'm five years old, six years old. So the car thing started with that and models and, uh, you know, Hot Wheels. And that was my, my generation. And I haven't stopped. And, that, and I've been in professionally in the automotive business since uh, 1975. And I mean, wow, that's what, like 38 years. It's hard to believe that I've been doing it this long. And over the years, I've done a lot of different things. Uh, some some guys were, you know, just a transmission mechanic or they were just painters and body men where I have a broad uh, a knowledge of different aspects of the automobile thanks to my father and thanks to going to the uh, auto shop right here uh, from John Horosky at Pottstown High School. He, he, I owe a lot to him. And then, uh, you know, working on hot rods, working on classic cars. And in 19... Uh, 70, let me get this right now, 1978, I was cruising High Street, and I met this girl, who's now my wife, uh, and she had a, a nice little yellow 68 Camaro. Um, she, we dated for a while, and she was looking for another car, so she bought that car for $180, and she sold it to me for $300 in 1979. I still own the car today. Uh, it was my first frame-up restoration in 1985. I started in 84. I finished it in 85. But before that, for about four years, I gathered parts. I saved money because that, that's the thing you have to do. You can't, expect, you can't uh, afford to spend all that money in one shot. So you, when you have an extra dollar, I bought the torque converter, I bought the shifter, and I bought different things and just put it up in the attic and waited till 1984 when I did my first frame up restoration. So tonight, uh, right here side of me, you can see this picture uh, is a, the most current picture. That's pretty much what the car looks like today, this shot here. Um, which I think we got on our camera pretty good. Uh, and the poster behind it is an old poster that I really need to redo. And it shows the car in uh, 1988 Carcraft, which would be your top article. And the car was featured in Carcraft thanks to my good friend Ed Quay. Ed Quay did the roll bar and the welding. Uh, Roberts Automotive Machine, if a lot of you guys remember Larry Roberts, he did the motor back in the day. And just about everything else uh, was done my, by my father and myself. Uh, interior, headliner, paint, bodywork, transmission, rear, brakes, tires, the, the, the whole thing was done at my garage in my spare time. And the thing that was unique about the car, it was a street legal car, it was um, electric windows, tilt wheel, full interior, and it was an expensive car to do, even though I did the work myself. It was an expensive car to do. There's a shot of it, what it looks like today. 
um, at Maple Grove, uh, leaving the line. And um, it was an expensive car to do back in the day because it was street legal, it was a show car, and it was a race car. Remember, if you build a race car, you didn't have to put an interior in it. You didn't have to put heater core or turn signals. Um, and if you build a show car, you didn't have to spend money on a high dollar engine and torque converter and you know um, shocks and roll cage and that type of stuff. And uh, back then I stopped adding, I had over $20,000 in that car. And back then you could have bought a beautiful Z28 that was numbers matching for probably 7,000. So, but I did the car once, I did it right, and it lasted a lifetime. Uh, even now it still is very presentable. I'm sure it shows its age, but it lasted because I stripped it and did it right. Um, the, other, the poster behind me shows some more articles. It was in Super Chevy in 1989, and uh, there's some pictures of it here. It was on the cover of a couple newsletters from Drag Racing. Um, Matt will zoom in here and he'll show you. There it is there. And then the latest article, which is the latest, we're talking 19, uh, I think it's 93, is in Chevy High Performance. They did a full spread on the car. And they liked the car at a show because it was actually raced. It wasn't a trailer queen. There you go. There's a better shot. It was a race car. I just got done racing it and took it to the show. And they really enjoyed that car because it was a true race car, not something that was over detailed for uh, a trailer queen. So that was my frame up restoration. I do have some pictures of it. You know, I always talk about pictures. And back then I took pictures, but I didn't nearly take enough. And I have old pictures of it. I'm just going to show a few just to show you. Matt's going to tune in the other camera here for us. And uh, here's a picture of the uh, uh, earliest picture I have of the car when my wife owned it, owned it uh, and when it was yellow. And you can see it right there. It was butternut yellow, black vinyl top, six cylinder automatic with no options. Craigers on it. Uh, very rusty because it came from the state of New Jersey. Uh, back in 85 when I did the car, it was rustier you know, than any other Camaro I ever saw. And a lot of people wrote it off. A lot of people had said that car is just not, it's beyond hope. And I refused to, to hear that. So I spent a lot of time and a lot of money reviving, reviving the car. And uh, there's a picture of it in 1979 at Ringing Hill Sunoco, my first business, uh, the first time I restored it. And then I'll skip through a couple pages here and I'll, I'll go to when I restored it in 1985. And you can see here, uh, I bashed in the door. I was towing the car home from Maple Grove and I stopped at my gas station with a tow bar and uh, I actually hit the gas pump, how embarrassing. I hit the gas pump with the car, with the tow bar. Me and Joe Greeby, a uh, kid that worked for me back then and I knew for quite a few years. Uh, we came home from Maple Grove, I was tired and uh, I made a boo-boo. So there's the motor out of the car. The car ran 1350s back then, street legal, four speed. And I ripped it apart, like I said, in 1984. And you can see just some of these photos. You can see, if you look real close, how, uh, how the trunk was, was full of holes. Um, the shot underneath it, Matt, if you can zoom in on that, there you go. You can see all the rust. And they didn't make a floor pan or trunk pan back then. They didn't make floor pans. They didn't make carpeting. I had uh, the first time I put carpet in the car, I, I put black carpet and put it in. I mean, you know, we're lucky nowadays that they make a lot of that reproduction stuff that you can do. And you can see here how the bottom of the cow, I repaired it and it was rusted out. The hole there is for electric windows, if you see that in the door jam. Again, the car didn't have all these options. I built a, 60, a 68 Z28 Rally Sport the way I wanted it. Uh, electric windows, tilt wheel, houndstooth interior, uh, black with red, I mean, I'm sorry, red with black stripes, which they didn't have. They usually had it with white stripes unless it had a vinyl top. But I, I, you know, I made it numbers, Matt. I mean, I made it authentic. I made the stripes correct. I made the different details about the car correct. It's fooled a lot of people. A lot of people think it's a real Z28. But uh, I did it the way I wanted to do it and, uh, you know, made it a race car, street car, and a show car. 
And I, like I said, still have it today. And I'll skip a few pages here and just show you. You can, you can zoom in on that. Matt's doing a great job because this is an old photo album and it's very glary. Yep, there's a good shot. There's my first ride home. Um, aluminum rod, small block Chevy that Larry Roberts built. Uh, lacquer paint, rubbed out hand by hand. Back then we only had 600 and some rough compound. We didn't have all the fancy fine sandpaper and compounds like we have today. So that uh, was a different world. Now we all use base coat, clear coat. Um, in, the, in 1990, I did a little bit of repair on the car and I cleared over the original lacquer and that's the way it stays till still uh, stays today with the red lacquer buried underneath the urethane clear and it's held up fine. Now of course you know it wasn't out in the weather much but it was raced hard hard for a lot of years. Big block with a trans brake coming out at 5,000 rpms so you know uh, like I said the car was done once it was done right that's at Maple Grove in the early days when it was a small block um, and you know it held up so first frame up restoration 1985 I'm proud of that there it is doing a burnout I was never uh, a killer at the drag strip I did okay I just enjoyed the sport and having fun seeing all my friends like John Connick the guy I mentioned earlier that lives in Florida and Skip Bechtel and uh, you know, the old timers, Dick Swavely and Tony Zimba and Paulie Zimba. You know, I could go on and on with all the guys that were there on a regular weekly basis. And they were the fun days at the track. Like I said, I never, never was a points champion. I never set any world records, but I had a lot of fun. And I was fortunate enough to do it for a long time. Now, the car is going to come to my shop shortly and it's going to get uh, redone. And I'm going to put it back on the street. And I'll still drag race it from time to time, but I'm going to make it more streetable. Um, you know, take the big gears out of it, take the electric fuel pump off of it, take the 14, one, the 14 to 1 compression motor. That fuel is about $11, $12 a gallon or more. It might even be more by now. And uh, put a, you know, a, a low compression motor in it that I can enjoy the car and drive it around. And, and hopefully you'll see it out on High Street uh, soon. So... That's a little bit, a little, uh, pretty much the photo album there. Uh, remember, I always tell everybody, take pictures while you're doing your restoration. I took some of them, and it's not enough. That's all I have. You know, what is it, 25, 30 years later, I have, a, you know, a few pictures of the car being built. Um, but when you're doing your restoration and you're doing your repairs and you're, you know, take pictures, bag and tag everything, organize it. It might be a few years before you put it back together. And uh, when it's finally back together, you can put a nice photo album together and show everyone. I do it on all of our jobs. And if you go to my website, you'll see, like the Mach 1 we did last winter, there's 400 pictures of it. It's good to show the customer and show potential customers what goes into building an award-winning, long-lasting restoration. You know. You, you could uh, cheat, you could do some things to cut corners, and no one would ever know, but it's nice to see the photos proving the job that you did, and uh, you know that, okay, you spent a little more money than you wanted to, but it's going to last for 25, 30 years. Uh, it's very hard to do a restoration or a paint job so-so. It's either a really cheap job or a really good job, because you know, anywhere in between is very hard for, for me to deliver. So a lot of times when you, you hear some of these prices, what it costs to restore a car, when you look at the pictures, that proves, uh, you know, why it costs so much. Because uh, to do it right, you got to hammer the metal out, work the metal, and keep the poly, uh, plastic, and that kind of stuff to a minimum. So I want to talk a little bit about that tonight. Um, I'm going to talk about, at the same time, restoration shop and collision shop. If you're picking a collision shop for your new car that costs $40,000, $50,000, or if you're picking a restoration shop, when you go to these shops, you might be fooled by the million-dollar facility and the facade that the shop portrays. So, being I, like many of people in this area, and I could name the names of the true craftsmen 
Uh, one of the best metal men that's no longer with us, people will talk about Ralph Stefano. He was excellent at doing metal work and fabricating. Um, and th 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 my job took 30 years to master some of the things that I do. So when you're picking a restoration shop or a collision shop, uh, the question you want to ask is, who's going to be working on my car? Is the guy any good? Uh, when you pick a big shop where it's a, owned by a, a conglomerate that they have 12 collision shops, the owner is in Florida at, on his yacht. And who knows who's going to be working on your car? Uh, they could have a, a bad employee. They could have someone that's going to wham, bam it, load it up with plastic. It'll look good, but it's not fixed correctly. So you have to really watch if you pick that big million dollar facility uh, you have to uh, analyze it just because they have a, a beautiful showroom and waiting room and i don't at my shop uh, you have to analyze uh, what is going to be done to my car who is better to restore my car or repair my collision job okay a shop that's small that has some nice equipment and to like my shop, Jeff and I both have 35 years experience repairing your car. How can you duplicate that? Where if you go to another shop, it's a real good salesman selling the job and the person that's actually doing the repair, who knows? It could be someone that just started in the business or someone that's a disgruntled or someone that's on flat rate that is getting paid to, to wham, bam, knock it out, make it look as good as they can and they won't go that extra mile. And this, this goes for other businesses too, just not automotive. When you, when you um, do business with local small businesses and you're dealing with the owner, if you're getting your car repaired or if you're eating a meal or you're shopping for furniture, a lot of times it's much better to, to use the local businesses here in Pottstown or your town and you have a face to talk to that really cares really cares about the quality of your repair so that if you have a problem you know that I'm gonna stand behind it or you know if the window doesn't work or the switch is broken I'm gonna make sure that it's uh, taken care of where a lot of the larger shops that gets lost you know because it is a large uh, I always say like when I do a restoration I do it my guy does it it's done by hand for some of the other restoration shops, it's a production. So um, if, you, if you patronize small business in general, whether it be automotive, whether it be where you eat your lunch, it helps the economy. The bigger get bigger because you're patronizing the big people and they get richer and richer and the small businesses slowly fade away because you're not patronizing them. And your taxes go up, they move out, they close up, it becomes destitute because you know, there's nobody there anymore because you didn't give them a shot. If they do a bad job or they make you a bad meal, let them know, but at least give them a shot. And that leads me to another show that I do here on PCTV called Pottstown's Wheel to the Future. And I'm gonna hold up this little card here. And uh, it's, it's uh, um, a, 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 a like Wheel of Fortune and it's a wheel that is at Sunnybrook Ballroom every Wednesday night at seven o'clock, okay? Uh, this gentleman named Earl Davis that came up with this idea, he, we give away money. We give away anywhere from $10 to $300. And that's all you have to do is visiting participating businesses, fill out your name, and if you're lucky enough to get picked to come down to Sunnybrook Ballroom, you can spin the wheel and walk out with cash. I just got done doing the show tonight at 7 o'clock, Wednesday night, Sunnybrook. Remember that. You can spectate the show there for free. You can spend $2 and get your name thrown into another box. And we picked two. Tonight we picked three contestants from the studio audience. And we're giving away money. Why is he doing this? He's trying to give back to the community. He's trying to make everyone aware of how important it is to support small business, especially in the economy we're in. If you patronize small business, they stay in business, they pay taxes, they hire employees, and they generally do a great job. So uh, Pottstown's Wheel to the Future, it's aired on PCTV 
Thursday night, Friday night, and Monday night at 7 o'clock. So check it out. It ties in with my show tonight about patronizing small business, whether it's your body shop, whether it's taking your wife out to eat on a Saturday night. Sunnybrook Ballroom is where the show is at, and if you haven't been to Sunnybrook, they are doing a fabulous job. They've restored the ballroom. It's absolutely beautiful. The restaurant, the lounge, it's really a, 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 a mainstay here in Pottstown. A lot of big bands, a lot of shows, a lot of talent over the years have appeared at Sunnybrook Ballroom. So check it out. I just wanted to you know, put that out there. I know tonight's show isn't maybe as much fun as last, month, last month's show with the Little Brothers, but it's important to make the public aware, to change their thinking about supporting small business, buying the United States, buying in the U.S. when you can, and that is a big key to seeing our country get back and our town get back to where it was. Remember cruising, remember all the stores that were on High Street. We can do it again, but we all have to think a little differently. The next time your, your car needs serviced, if you don't want to come see me, go see another shop in Pottstown instead of driving you know, uh, to the neighboring town. If you want to go shopping, Try the stores on High Street. You'll be surprised. There's some neat places that are trying to make a comeback on High Street. So, uh, we're getting close on time here for tonight's show. I hope that I've reached and, and uh, educated a few people on, you know, uh, thinking a little bit differently about some more supporting small business. Uh, some upcoming events. Auto Locator, right here. If anyone doesn't know what it is, it's a magazine that's available at your local stores. It has a bunch of car show in it, car show information in it. There's a list of upcoming events. I'll read a few off to you. Uh, Automania up at Allentown, January 18th to 20th. Uh, the Auto Show at Harrisburg is uh, January 24th to 27th. Um, Barrett Jackson is on next week on television, folks. Barry Jackson is for TV. It's a nice show to watch about cars, but it's not reality. A lot of the prices on there are because of all the rich people that want to buy a car. It's not really what the car is worth sometimes. So Barry Jackson, January 13th to 20th. Atlantic City car auction is March 1st this year. I'll be there. I'm going to try to auction off one of my Camaros, and uh, it's a lot of fun. It's a realistic auction where the prices are more down to earth and more affordable to the common person. So that's March 1st. Um, so don't forget, if you got nothing to do in the wintertime and you want to do some car things, there's a few things, not like the summer, but there is a few things to do. Uh, like I said, the closest one will be January up at Allentown. Um, so that's about it for tonight's show. I thank you for tuning in. Watch us on the net, live, streaming. You can archive our show and watch it, and tell your friends to watch it. And I'm looking for drag racers to tell their story. If you don't want to come on TV, you can just share your pictures with me. I'm going to put together a show on local history of drag racing. So, my name is Mike Yanessa from Wheels in Motion, and that's our episode of Car Stories here, live, Wednesday night, what is it, January 9th? 2013. And thank you for tuning in.